Hello everyone. If you're like me, and I know I am, you spend a lot of money on your kids. All the stuff you have to buy and keep buying, like bubble stuff. Now those of you who don't have kids, you might say, well that's kind of petty, isn't it? Just buying some more bubble stuff. Well, if you knew how long it took kids to go through this, you'd probably end up spending more money on this than you went on clothes, and that's not good. So, your parents out there have probably been wondering, hey, how can I just make my own stuff that's just as good as the stuff I buy in the store? And you probably even made a couple of attempts and they didn't work out very well. Well, all you have to do is understand the science behind how bubbles work. Now, you probably know that a bubble is just this little sphere of soapy water that floats through the air for a few seconds and then pops, you know, however long it is. And when you try to make it yourself, you might get a bubble and it pops immediately or something like that and you just can't quite get it right. So I'm going to show you my recipe for making this stuff. I'm also going to show you why it works. And to go into why it works, you might have to think back to your high school science class about surface tension. Take a look at this. Here I have a styrofoam plate with some water in it. I've just given it a little bit of red food coloring so you can see it better. Now you notice how it kind of all bunches together on one side of the plate. Like it all wants to go together. That's surface tension. So here I have some soapy water. I'm just going to pin in a tiny bit of this and we'll see what happens. Hey, did you see that? Now I've got it covering the whole bottom of the plate. The reason why is that the soap broke down the surface tension of the water, making the water spread around all over the plate. Now something that happens that isn't quite so obvious is, as it moves over the plate, it stretches out. And what happens is that the surface concentration of the soap decreases, and that actually increases its surface tension. I know it sounds kind of weird, but it's something called the Marangoni effect. You can look up how it works if you want. But this is important for understanding how these bubbles work. So what happens is, when you blow that bubble, it's the surface tension that wants to hold it together. But if the surface tension is too high, it can't form the bubble to begin with. What the soap does is make the bubble just right. So that as it forms the bubble, the surface tension is low enough to do that, but also in the process, as it stretches around, the surface tension increases to hold the bubble together. But, as I said, you can mix soap and water together and not get very good bubbles. It doesn't last. Why? Well, basically because the molecules still just aren't sticky enough to hold together. And this is where my secret ingredient comes in. It's just something that's going to increase the molecular bonds between the soap and the water. And when you think sticky, you might think of this stuff. Corn syrup. That's really all it is. Just a little bit of this in the water and in the soap will do it. So, here's how I do it. Okay, so I have my bubble container in my bubble thing. I've got my corn syrup. I've got warm water, just from the tap will do. And I've also got some dishwashing liquid. Now, if you have really small kids, you might want to use some No More Tears shampoo. That way, if bubble stuff gets in their eyes, it doesn't sting them. So, I'm going to start by pouring in the water, and I'm going to fill it up about halfway. Then, I'm going to take just a dollop of corn syrup. You don't need much. Yeah, maybe a little more of a dollop. Okay. If you use too much, what will happen is you'll get really strong bubbles, which the kids will think are cool, and you might think they're cool too, until you have to go around the house cleaning up bubbles everywhere. But it might be good for some outside bubbles. Uh, so I'm just going to stir that up a bit. I'm going to go ahead and do this so it won't suds up. Sudsing up a little bit just from the leftover soap that was in there before. But that should be good. Then I'm just going to fill it up the rest of the way with the dishwashing liquid. It's 
So it's half warm water, half dishwashing liquid, and your dollop of corn syrup. Okay, now if I've done this right, I should get some nice bubbles. Hey, look at those. There's a big one. Uh, oh, there's a smaller one. The big one popped. And if you don't think the bubbles stick around a lot, and you want longer lasting bubbles, depending on what you've done, you either have to put in more corn syrup or more detergent. So it just really all depends. Of course, the nice thing is if you spill any of it, it's just soapy water and it cleans right up. So now you know about soap bubbles and the Marangoni effect, and you know how to mix up your own soap stuff so you don't have to keep running to the store and buying it. Only costs you a few pennies and just a couple of minutes. Isn't science great? <laughs>